Hey guys, so today I want to do a quick little video about this new phone, uh, the HTC Desire 600 Dual SIM. Yes, that is the name of this device. It seems like some kind of mi new mid-range device from HTC uh, that will compare com compete against other mid-range devices from Samsung and Sony. And uh, when we look at the pictures here of this device, it seems like it's going to come out next month, early in Russia, Ukraine and in the Middle East. And uh, when we take a look at this device, I think it looks pretty sexy. Uh, first of all, I think that it looks better than HTC's flagship device, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure about the material on the back, but if it's aluminum, then that, that is pretty nice on a mid-range smartphone. We don't know the pricing about this device, but one of the reasons why I do like this design more than the HTC One, HTC's flagship device for this year, is because it seems like the edges of the phone is more rounded off. So you won't have that uh, problem that you do get with HTC's, uh, HTC's main smartphone at the moment, the HTC One. And then also this one also has stereo speakers on the front, uh, so you, you will have amazing sound also on this mid-range device. And as I said, we don't know about the pricing, so I can't tell you if it, if, if it would be a good purchase. And I'm not sure if it's going to launch in Europe and uh, in, in the US, but probably it, it will uh, also. So as I said, it, uh, launch uh, beginning of June in Russia, Ukraine and in the Middle East. Uh, it has Sense 5 also as the new HTC One. It has a, when, the, when you hear the name HTC Desire 600, you might think that oh, this, this bad boy is going to have the Snapdragon 600 chipset, same as in the HTC One. No, that is totally wrong. It's going to have a Snapdragon 200 only, uh, but it's, it's still a quad-core uh, smartphone with Cortex A5, A5 uh, four cores clocked at 1.2 GHz, 1 GB of RAM, Adreno 203, so um, also not as good C uh, GPU there. Uh, one of the major downsides it seems with this phone is that it won't come with an SD card option and also it seems like it's only going to come in an 8GB variant. Wow! I think that's a pretty bad, 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 bad thing. Uh, I do own a 8GB smartphone right now, an Android smartphone from Samsung, the Galaxy S3 mini. But that phone has actually an SD card option, so if you want to expand the memory, you can. And it's, it's especially pretty hard if you only have 8 gigabytes. If you want to have two or three racing games, it's almost hard to install that on an 8 gigabyte smartphone that you can't expand the memory. So a little bit boring over there uh, that you can't expand. Uh, and then the battery seems to be eight, eight, uh, 1860 milliamps and it's pr pr pretty good actually for a mid, mid range device. 4.5 inch screen, so a little bit bigger than the Galaxy S2, that's something I do like. Super LCD 3, uh, Super LCD 2 technology on the, on the screen, uh, in QHD, so it's not going to be as good as the flagship device. Uh, but the, the things I do like is that we, we haven't seen the price yet. It looks pretty sexy on the back with, with the camera design and everything. And I think it really looks nice here in both colors and especially if it's aluminum as well. It, it looks pretty cool here for a mid-range device. So we will see when this is going to come out. Uh, if it comes at a good price then I might be able to pick it up. I'm looking forward to picking up more and more Android smartphones and just in general more devices. I wanna, I don't want to just review high-end smartphones. I want to review the whole range of, from low-end to mid-end to high-end. So uh, we'll see what the pricing is going to be and when it will be unveiled in other areas like Europe and the US and maybe even Asia. Have a good day.